Customer service uh, on the programme this morning, and we've all come across a person like this. Carol Beer has left her job at the bank and is now delighting customers at this travel agent's and a new town of SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> Welcome to Sun Searches. My name is Carol. Now we've had a look at the brochures and we want to book a trip to Disney World for Christmas. Right. I want to meet Mickey Mouse. Just be a man in a suit. But... <laughs> What you want? So you need flights to Florida. Computer says no. All the flights are booked. I've got some seats on Air Zimbabwe. Well, that'd be okay. To Zimbabwe, you would then need to make your way to Disney World on foot. Maybe not. No. Well, look, is there anywhere else we can go? You know, that could be fun. Something here on the screen. Yeah, that would be ideal. It's wonderful weather this time of year. Very reasonable. Computer says no. Well, we've all been there. We've all met Carol, haven't we? We're talking about customer service on the uh, programme this morning. For many of us, it's a make or break as to whether we'll ever step back in that shop or restaurant again. You've been telling us your pet hates this morning when a bad experience has stopped you going back into a particular shop. But it seems our independent shops are leading the way here. Kate Harcastle is from the Warrington-based company Insight with Passion set up, uh, which uh, at the uh, Customer at Heart uh, uh, Awards uh, as well. So you obviously uh, know what you're doing there. Kate, good morning to you. Hi, good morning. Yes, uh, yep. well, you know, this started a few years ago when actually from personal reasons, some of the team at Insight with Passion were just fed up of being treated so badly. And we went out there and thought, God, customer service is not only causing a lot of challenges for businesses out there. Are the staff um, under a lot of stress, though? You know, we're, we're, our, our listeners this morning are saying they're under a lot of stress, they've got targets to hit, and that's why, you know, in some cases, bad customer service comes across. Hey, there's massive amount of pressure on businesses at the moment and particularly the national chains where the message is filtered down to the people on the shop floor or the, or the agent's floor or wherever they are think that it's all about targets and doing the sales and sometimes they don't get the time as you were mentioning before to, to put the customer service in what we recognize is that brilliant customer service can evolve a business and with over half of us taking word of mouth um, which is when we recommend a great customer service to some family or friend member, uh, we will then go in and trust that and go and give it a go. So it can actually lead to increased sales. So we're trying to work with businesses to try and help them to understand this and to try and get them to make the time to serve people because we all know what it's like. You know, a quarter of us deal with bad customer service every day. And we actually know this is causing us all to get very stressed out. I mean, how many of us have had to complain or walk away mm. thinking, oh, I can't stand that queue. You know, half of us see a queue in a shop, we walk away. But I won't go, but see, the thing is, I don't know whether I'm, uh, I'm on my own here, Kate, but you, you, I, I hold a grudge and I will never go back to that shop uh, again if I, if I receive particularly bad customer service. Now, I'm not saying I'm someone special, but there's other places I can go and get stuff from. I'm afraid you're not on your own. Nearly 70% of people in a recent survey said exactly the same. So what an opportunity. We're about turning things around and looking at the other side of it. If you do it brilliantly, and this is a great opportunity for the independent retailers, independent businesses, and you can make that your kind of selling point and your niche, then you're going to get fantastic service. Okay, it's going to take a while for that word of mouth to come around, but you're going to be able to go in there and, and, and take on some of the big national brands who can't offer that at the moment. But shouldn't the big national brands, the big chains, be right on the ball with this? They've got the resources and the cash to train people up in the right way. And there's fantastic organisations that are doing that. I don't like to kind of um, be too to uh, brand particular, but John Lewis, for instance, have topped another customer service poll for doing things brilliantly. Yeah, but the staff own the shop. Isn't that a difference? Absolutely. Absolutely. There are ways around this, and people have got to understand the importance of customer care. But if you're on a, you know, this is, like you said, it's not about the people on the floor all the time. If you've got a massive checklist of things to do, a lot of administration-based tasks, sometimes you don't see the people there, and we do so much mystery shopping for our clients. And I actually, you know, I, I'm one of the mystery shoppers, and I just get so fed up of people who can't even spend the time to invest in finding me another size or finding me something in a different colour. So you give them a big black mark then to you? Give them some product information. Well, we give people the opportunity to shine. Yeah. We test them. We emotionally do it. It's not a tick list. We kind of engage with that person and we try and understand what might be behind it. And a lot of the time, when you can see someone fiddling with a printer or trying to get a till to work or rushing in and out of the stockroom, you can see straight away that, yes, that's bad customer service, but 
there's something behind that. Do, that's, do you know, that's my job, though. You know, we're talking about what the end consumer gets, mm. and the end consumer is feeling very sore 